Hey guys, welcome back to the channel and thank you so much for joining me today. So as you can see from the title and the thumbnail, today's video is all about Christchurch and why I think it is one of the best cities in New Zealand to live. My partner and I lived in Christchurch for about two and a half months and although that's not a ton of time, we think we got a really good feel for the city. And I wanted to share a few things like cost of living, what it's like to live there and what things you can do in the area. I wanted to go through cost of living first. This really plays into why I think Christchurch is such an amazing city. So I'm gonna break down all the costs of living in Christchurch you can make your own comparisons to wherever you live. All of these figures are going to be in New Zealand dollars, so feel free to do conversion rates to whatever currency you need to. We're gonna start with housing. This is usually the biggest portion of anyone's budget. But let's start with rent. The median price for a two bedroom apartment in Addington, which is an inner city neighborhood, was $455 a week. A neighboring area called Sydenham or Sydenham, let me know down below how to say that, goes for $399 a week. And then if you're going to live right in the city center, you can expect a median of about $430 a week. I did see on a different website that the average rent in Christchurch is $513 a week, which I think is quite comparable to a lot of the other cities. The median price if you're looking to purchase a home is between $630,000 and $663,000. And then the average is about $730,000. This is still quite high, but it is a little more affordable than cities like Wellington or Auckland. And if you're going to be moving here from another country like the USA or Canada or Europe, usually your currency is going to go quite a bit further. So if you convert that 730,000 New Zealand dollars into your currency, you might find that you can actually afford a bit more house in New Zealand. Now let's talk about transportation. We'll start with vehicles. So of course you can buy a vehicle at any price point. There are luxury vehicles, there are budget vehicles, and new vehicles are always going to be really quite expensive no matter where you are. I'm going to focus on used vehicles. That is the best way to get a good deal and that is what we ended up doing when we first moved here. But I looked at three different websites for this information. I looked at Trade Me, Turner's, and a few used car dealership websites. And I feel like 5,000 to 10,000 New Zealand dollars is a really good budget to get your first starter vehicle. The nice thing about New Zealand, if you're from a country that gets really intense winters, is you don't have to worry about getting winter tires or really driving through ice and snow. You can get tire chains here if you're gonna be going into the mountains at some point. For insurance, so I've heard that insurance is not actually mandatory in New Zealand, but we did end up getting it and we pay 48 New Zealand dollars per month for it. And that's for pretty full coverage. In comparison, I was paying over $100 Canadian per month in Canada to to insure my vehicle. Gas in Christchurch ranges between $2.84 and $2.97 a liter at this point in time. And I wanted to give you guys a tip. There is an app called Gaspy. I'll put their little logo up here so you can see it. But this app will give you all of the gas station prices around the city. So you can pick which one is the best price and maybe the closest to you so that you can save a little bit money on gas because it is very expensive here no matter where you are. For car maintenance, oil changers is where we normally go for our oil changes and it starts at around $100 for an oil and a filter change. A WAF or a warrant of fitness, which you do have to get on your vehicle every single year, goes for about $80, but keep in mind you will have to complete any repairs that show up in that inspection in order to get that warrant of fitness. And this can be a few thousand dollars depending on your vehicle. So that might be a downside if you're gonna get a used vehicle that has a bit of issues, but if you're handy, if you like to fix your own vehicles or you find a really good mechanic, you should be able to budget for this if anything does come up. For transit, we didn't end up using any public transit in Christchurch, but there is a transit network called Metro and the fares, if you have a Metro card, are $2. If you're gonna use cash, it's double that price, so $4 per fare. And it looks like their bus network actually goes quite a ways, so I'll I'll link it down below and I'll maybe I'll put a little map up here so you can see where all the buses go if you don't have a vehicle. Next on the list is groceries. So in the two and a half months that we spent living in Christchurch, we ended up spending an average of 1,465 New Zealand dollars a month on groceries for two people. That works out to about $730 each per month. And we pretty much buy 
everything on sale and we cook at home all the time. We don't typically buy things that are frozen meals. Like we actually buy everything fresh and cook it. So we do eat quite well, but we do still buy things on sale. The price of food has gone up everywhere. So maybe that's just a reflection of that. We do typically shop at Countdown, which is one of the more expensive grocery stores. And if you're looking to save, I think pack and save is probably the best bet. I just personally don't like going into that store. It gives me a lot of anxiety, so I avoid it. But if you're looking to save, maybe pick a really good time to go when it's not that busy. I think I've heard Sunday nights or Friday nights are really good. Let's talk about phone and internet. I pay 40 New Zealand dollars a month for an unlimited phone plan with Skinny Mobile. That's a really good deal. For the equivalent in Canada, I'd be paying at least double that. We currently pay $55 a month for 120 gigabytes. I don't think that's that good, but the internet here is a little bit confusing to me. So we have Spark. The only reason we went with Spark is because the place we moved into already had the modem. We didn't wanna have to pay another $150 to get a new one with another company. So we just ended up signing up with Spark to save a bit. The way the internet works here, at least with Spark, is you have a SIM card in the modem and it's actually using the cell network to get you on the internet. So that means it's a little more susceptible to lagging. I was also told we weren't able to get the unlimited package because there were too many people on the network in our area. The price for the unlimited plan though was 80 or $85, which again is really good. You'd be paying quite a bit more for that in Canada. It's safe to say that phone and internet plans that have quite a bit of data are quite affordable. It also seems like New Zealand is moving to fiber. When we signed up with Spark, they suggested we installed fiber but I think it's like a three or four month wait to actually get that work done. So if you're moving to a house or an apartment that already has fiber, you're gonna have much better internet speeds and much better quality, but it will be more expensive. I think the fiber plans go for around $120 a month. Next on the list is utilities. So electricity, we haven't actually gotten our electricity bill yet, but it looks like Christchurch has the most affordable power rates at 30 cents per kilowatt hour. And after doing a bit of research online, it looks like $150 a month in the summer and $250 in the winter is a good estimate, at least to start with. Of course, your power consumption is going to be different than everyone else's. If you're not home a lot, if you don't work at home, you're probably gonna be using a lot less power and therefore your bill is going to be lower. Now for entertainment. So of course this budget can go anywhere from zero to thousands of dollars. This is totally up to you, but I wanted to give you an idea of what a few different things cost in Christchurch specifically. So a meal out for two people, we were spending between 70 and hundred New Zealand dollars for this. And of course you're gonna spend a lot less if you don't drink alcohol go to a place that's a little bit cheaper, a sit down restaurant that's kind of known for its cheap eats, or you go on a night where they have a special, like a two for one or something on the menu that's cheaper on a certain day. You could definitely get this down to 10 to $20 a person if you find the right spots. Now for beer, you can expect to pay between 11 and 14 New Zealand dollars for a pint. I think that's a pretty good price, pretty typical, especially if you're at a brewery, but I do think Christchurch has lower beer prices than anywhere else we've been in New Zealand. For takeaways, I think between 10 and 15 New Zealand dollars per person is a good average. Of course, again, that varies depending on where you go or if you're going on a night where they have a special. Fish and chip takeaways tend to be the cheapest that we've found. Next up is activities. We ended up going out for a movie night at a small local theater and that cost 43 New Zealand dollars for two people, which included snacks and drinks. We also went to a beer and music festival and that was a little expensive at $50 per person, which didn't include any of the drinks or the samples. Christchurch has an amazing rugby team called the Crusaders and we were lucky enough to get to go to, I think three different games and the prices varied, but you can definitely find tickets for around $20 per person. I do like that Christchurch has a lot of different things going on. There's usually some event going on every weekend, no matter what the season is, which brings us into just a few points I wanted to touch on, like pros and cons of living in Christchurch. A big pro for me, which might sound kind of weird to some of you, is that Christchurch is flat and all the roads are flat. And yes, there are hills in some of the areas in Christchurch in the Kashmir Hills or the Port Hills. But if you're living down in the city center or somewhere that's not in the hills, it's really flat. The roads are super easy to drive on because they're flat and they're straight. And I love that because it's a little difficult driving in New Zealand sometimes around the windy roads. Christchurch is normally, I wanna say, on banned tour lists if you're big into music. 
I know my personal favorite band, the Foo Fighters, are coming next year, and we're going to go and see them in Christchurch, so that is super exciting. Christchurch is building a new arena, so you can expect that this will get better in the coming years, and you will get more events and more bigger music artists. Another pro is that there's so many amazing travel destinations that are a short drive away. When I say a short drive, I mean under four hours for me, I think is a good amount of time. So places like Akaroa, which is about an hour and a half. Arthur's Pass, which again, about an hour and a half away. The West Coast, Dunedin, Kaikoura. There are so many places that are a short drive away that are so amazing to go and explore. Christchurch is such a good base to see a large portion of the South Island. And if you're moving here to make it your home, you're definitely going to have so many places to choose from when you wanna go out and explore the country. It's also worth mentioning that Christchurch does have an international airport. Most international flights go into Auckland, but I think now that the pandemic is kinda of gone and that industry is recovering, more flights are coming directly into Christchurch. I do know that you can fly directly from Canada to Christchurch. So that's a bonus if you're not from New Zealand, you're looking to move here, but you do wanna be able to go back home and visit family and friends. You don't have to go up and connect in Auckland first, depending on where you're going, of course. Christchurch is a growing city. It does have a pretty small population right now of about 389,000 people, but it is expected to grow to over 414,000 people by 2033. There's a lot of stuff going on in Christchurch. There's a lot of things being built, and I think it's going to become a really popular city in the coming years. I don't have children and I don't plan on going back to school anytime soon, but Christchurch does have two pretty well-known universities, the University of Canterbury, and they also have a university University of Otago campus. I'm gonna give you a few cons. These are things that I've noticed that probably won't be cons to everybody, but I thought I would bring it up just in case this might be a factor for you in deciding if it's the right place to live. I do find Christchurch is lacking a little bit in terms of culture compared to other cities like Wellington or Rotorua or Auckland. Since Christchurch has a pretty small population, it means that there's not a million things going on. There's still a good amount of stuff going on, but with a smaller population, you're not gonna have the same amount of events to choose from compared to cities like Auckland or Wellington. So it's something to keep in mind if you're someone who really likes to go out and experience events and things going on in your city. And the last thing on the con list for me is the earthquake risk. If you don't know, Christchurch had a really major earthquake in 2011 that leveled a lot of buildings in the city. And it is a risk still to this day, but the city is being rebuilt with that in mind. It could be a deal breaker for you if you're going to move there and buy an older home that hasn't been built to the earthquake standards. I don't think it would be a deal breaker for a lot of people. You would probably need to look into how much earthquake insurance would be. I personally love Christchurch. I think it's one of the best cities to live in in New Zealand. I definitely think it's one of the most, if not the most affordable cities. And I think it's an amazing place to raise a family and to live. So I hope this video helped you in deciding whether or not Christchurch might be a good fit. And thank you so much for watching. I'll see you guys really soon in the next one. Bye.